Big Sunday afternoon ahead of you. We've got Brisbane up against the Carlton Footy Club. And I tell you what, it is a must-win game for both these clubs, McDonald's and Ream Hot Water. Triple M, Rocks Footy, massive show coming up. Isaac Smith for the Geelong Footy Club. Are they going well at the moment? Carlton assistant coach Aaron Hamill. Hit your caravan, which is sponsored. Mm. We've got Jay-Z's big three, the Sunday Rub Quiz semi-final one. Joey up against Ross and all the news throughout the day. But uh, let me get around this great panel. And uh, we're one down early, and we'll discuss that in a minute. But uh, a man who played 280-odd games at the St Kilda Football Club and was a star, and he's Joe Montagna. Hello, Brownie. G'day, boys. Yes, nice to be here. We're only just a half day for us today, so we'll make sure we're up and about early and get stuck into it and uh, plenty to play out. And everybody's favourite coach, and he's the man on everyone's lips at the moment. Does he get a coaching job or does he leave us on a Sunday, Ross Lyon? Great to be here, Brownie. Great to be here. You won't leave us. Who would that be? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Actually, I'm a bit sing-songy in my voice, so I'm going to... Think about being more deliberate and concise with my language. Ah, today. very nice, Ross. And I was just in South Melbourne. I was just in South Melbourne to get a burrito. I go up to Mad Mex up there, and there was a guy walking across the street. It's not that warm out in uh, side today. It's about 13 degrees in Melbourne. No top on. So he just had the jeans, zero top on, but he had a backpack on as well. And I thought, here comes Jay-Z. <laughs> He's the only man who wears a top less than anybody is Jay-Z. So welcome. Not bad, Brownie. Although you are the only man I know who has Instagrammed themselves making their own bed. Now, I think once, yeah, you've, once, once you've nailed that, that's taking self-indulgence to a new level, don't you think? So I, haven't, I look forward to I don't think it'll actually ever happen again. That's no, something. So you put at the bottom, paid, this is a paid yeah. advertisement. Do you do that? That's... No, it wasn't a paid advertisement. I <laughs> well, temp so mattresses. Just content, was um, it? I am now an ambassador for, yes. um, and so, um, um, I haven't. Well, yeah, I got a mattress, so I'm not <laughs> really sure of the legalities of that, Ross. But temp mattresses. Sorry for if you want a good night's sleep, you go to temper mattresses. But. Uh, <laughs> We're one down. We're one down today because North Melbourne are playing across the road over at Marvel Stadium and Duck's not here. And uh, I've got under good authority that they're having a oh. celebration around the 1996 Premiership team and what a team it was led by Dennis Pagan and our man Duck. But doing a lap of honour today, Duck, and there, there wasn't many people there, I'm being no. told. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they didn't turn out? Did they think the Kangas fans had all come? So it's so a Sunday. So all the Kangas 99, 96 Premiership. Team, yep, and they've been going since Friday. Is that right? So is this the third day of their um, sort of three day catch up? Uh, probably. probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I was fortunate enough. My great friend Anthony Rock come into town for the premiership, and he said, "Head down to Lamaro's, and the duck will come." And you know, but uh, the duck didn't front, right? Which right. I like his discipline. He he had the the seven commitment. I would have thought. Now, but Craig Shiel, a wonderful, wonderful player, he was. He was there, and. Uh, Look, it'd be fair to say they got the celebrations off to a <laughs> flying start. So this was on Friday. Friday, Friday they made yesterday. Rocky leading the charge. How many Kangaroos players did you see down there? Uh, I don't want to give anyone up. It's part of the kangaroo creed. If you're in, you can't talk about it. But there was a couple. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yes, they kicked on yesterday. Am I right? So they, Duck they... had the day off, didn't he? Yeah. So he, they all were on the source again uh, yesterday. So that was day two. I heard that was uh, quite festive. But he wasn't initially he wasn't going to do the lap. But then Dennis Pagan got on the phone and basically convinced him. So the coach still has the pull with the star player. He said, listen, son, listen, get son. in the car with yeah. me. Yes, sir. And we're going to be holding the cup together. So Pago was able to. I'll be there. I'll be there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No worries, yes, sir. Dennis. Listen here, son. We only had a, a, a salary cap of $1.5 billion all those years, and you got 900 of that. So you are <laughs> going to be there, and you're going to get in the vehicle to go around. But uh, it's been – we'll get to the camp a little bit later. Yep. But You've got some news around um, uh, Rossi. Yeah. <laughs> I've Cam come in nervous. Was that, was that off air stuff? We no, 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 about, no, no, we can bring no, it No, that's all right. We're just talking about, about if Ross had ever made us do anything that we didn't feel comfortable doing. And yeah, I trying. Said, absolutely <laughs> there was. Because there was a time Chasing and tackling. we went to New Zealand and Ross, Ross made everybody on the list. There was a one in all in situation where he made everyone bungee jump. So there were some people that weren't overly comfortable with Petra. Ooh, Petra. that's frightening. <laughs> Bungie <laughs> jump. There were some that did not want to do it, but no one was game enough to say to Rossi, no, I'm petrified of heights. And in the end, we all, all won in all, in all at the bungee jump. Well, can, can we dive into that camp a little bit? That was quite a significant Jay-Z's. camp, the yes. 2000. Jay, yes. so you could. Yeah. So I went, I actually slipped my disc, and I was, I was uh, basically bound in the bed by the bungee jump. Or I struggled to move all week, and then, uh, you know, there was a – the boys were one and all in. I think they, you know, we didn't have a curfew, but we were a training camp. And mm-hmm. 
but they found the extracurricular activities a few of the Saints boys. And uh, oh, was that the camp? Oh, that, that was, was the, the camp. Late I think at night, that was Jackie the... Stevens and Dawes and That's Gilbo. Right. And... That was the sleeping tablets. Sleeping tablets and red wine. We're but that on wasn't mandated, was it? No, that wasn't. The but everyone was the flat weapon? because we had a big night planned for the last night. We had to get <laughs> out for dinner up the hill. The and... Sleeping tablets. <laughs> we had some players get in trouble. They got caught. <laughs> um, what they do? The young blokes. They went out, took sleeping tablets, and had some red wines, and got caught wandering around. <laughs> Queenstown, yeah. Queenstown, it all hours. But the, the Australian <laughs> Open was That's what on. You, do. you go out for a big night, you take a sleeping tablet <laughs> yeah. before you go out. Oh, these That's young blokes. The days. Australian Open and was on, the right? So all the assistant coaches and the players, fair enough. Australian Open, and, and it was a leisure camp. It was whitewater rafting. It was a bit of kumbaya, bungee jumping, and so because I had the back and I was tucked up in bed, tan, couldn't move, and. I got up for breakfast one morning and Stephen King, I thought, you look a bit dusty. And he said, oh, I've got something to tell you. And I went, oh, this isn't good. <laughs> and he said, uh, I feel the players got a bit of strife last night at, you know, at three o'clock. And I said, how would you know? <laughs> <laughs> he said, uh, we were all out with them. <laughs> <laughs> the coach, well, but that we, was all right. He said, well, watching the Australian Open, and, yeah, you know, yeah. one pot becomes. Well, when you're seeing your coaches in bed, Jay-Z with a sore back, and we all know that he ain't going to be out. He ain't going to see anybody. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's eyes lit up and yeah. said, hey, Rossi's in bed for a few days. Um, <laughs> yeah, we rely on your out. leadership. Joe was the head of the leadership group. <laughs> we're all tucked up in yeah. bed, the leaders. Hey, you know what I love? I love when players come out and say something. So mm. during the week, and yep. I love this from Ed Langdon, and there's a lot of people out there who – said they probably shouldn't have said it. The Collingwood, obviously the Collingwood boys Ooh, didn't man, overly like it. They put it up it. on the whiteboard. They went after it. So just to remind you, this is what Ed Langdon said during the week. They're sort of all duck, no dinner in a sense that, um, you know, if they're playing fast footy on their terms, they're, they're a very hard team to stop. But um, they're a bit of a one-trick pony at times. So hopefully we can uh, right. dampen the way they want to play and, and on the back of that, you know, go out and, and ostensibly play the way we want to play. So that was on SEN during the week, and you can imagine that Collingwood people hearing that. And mm-hmm. we spoke to Simon Goodwin Friday night, and he said he listened to it and he almost coughed up his cornflakes mm. that he couldn't believe he said it. <laughs> and then uh, Alan Richardson also said that he probably made a mistake. I don't see it as a mistake, but then there's a little bit that we didn't get that hasn't been played on the same interview about his former coach. Did it ever make sense to you that? A coach would make that, you know, a kind of a point that he wanted to kind of really stress to players. Uh, yeah, absolutely, it did cross my mind. Uh, I thought it was a bit ridiculous, but you know, at that point in my career, I wasn't really in a position to uh, be arguing. So, when you got to Melbourne, was it something that you had to, you know, kind of seek approval for? Did you have to, did you have to say to someone like Goody or Hey, fellas, is it okay if I, I actually wear if I'm in the long if, sleeve. I'm, if I wear the long sleeve jumper? Uh, no, no, and nor nor should you have to. Uh, no, I'd be like saying, "Can I uh, can I wear a headband this week, or do I have to uh, tie it up?" So the long sleeve jumper that you banned, that Ed Langdon had to sort permission for, and now he's talking about it. This <laughs> well, far I'm glad down the I've track. got a platform. <laughs> 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 That's yes. the beauty of being in the media now. You, so Ross Lyons. he had a little bit of footy mouth with the. I've got a bit of Ed's Instagram page here. Someone sent me through. He's like prepared. One tri- yeah, quack, he's... quack, quack, and <laughs> one trick pony, one flag. D's more like it from the Collingwood Horde. So oh. simply, there was no rule. I had no no rule. I had, and I tried to rack my brain. So I rang the football manager, Chris Bond. He said, no rule, Ross. And Mick Barlow, because he wrote an article about Monday that he wanted to share with me. I said, mate, did we have a rule? Because you got to put it in context, right? So Perth, I wouldn't have worn jeans in eight years. Like, it's a pretty warm climate over there. So you're not dealing with long sleeves a lot. And then when you're playing Brisbane, it's pretty warm. Then Sydney. So the only two states would be Tassie and Melbourne. And I honestly can't remember. But Mick Barlow said some the players had their own creed. So it might have, it might have been something he perceived. But I can guarantee you. Really simply, there was no rule from me saying you couldn't wear long sleeves. And Joey Coach, I can't, was it at the Saints? Or? No, it wasn't. I think people maybe would have been a bit scared to wear the long sleeve, and just in case you played the bad, just I'm, in case. I'll take them on. Jay Z, no, take your long sleeve. Yeah, yeah, right. sleeve. Well, well, just in on. case you are a target if you play poorly if you in play a long sleeve. you play poorly in the long sleeve, yeah, maybe but then you caught the you criticism. Because it's a. It's a I, I remember Clarker, because Mitchell took over, and I think Wingard or someone spoke at Wingard. They weren't. A, I can guarantee if he. Because Chris Bond reminded me we had a young player, Jesse Crichton, who had permed hair, was peroxide blue, was long, and 
And when I first got there and he was struggling, the assistant coaches grabbed me and said, oh, you know, we want to talk to him about his haircut. And Bondi reminded me, he said, mate, do you remember what you said? I said, no, what did I say? Um, he said, I don't care what colour his hair is. I believe, why don't they train hard and they compete? So that was my overriding philosophy. So if Ed felt like that, he clearly felt like it come from somewhere. Didn't come from me. It wasn't a rule. Was it something... Uh, I'll share one more. This is really important because sometimes the player groups are, I think. So there was a late in, maybe 16 when we started the struggle, we used to let players stay over in their home state because see your, see your family. So our leadership group went to Chris Bond and myself and said, we don't want the players staying over in Melbourne because they obviously get a line of sight what's going on, right? What Melbourne looks like when they stay behind and we're struggling. We want them to come back with the team. I was like, oh, they said, no, that's what we want a leadership group, but we want you to police it and you put it in. And when Chris Bond left the club, he got feedback. Oh, you know, players are me to say you don't let them save him. That was driven by the player group. So it could have been where from Perth, when it gets cold, we don't want to show that we're feeling the cold. So um, that that's fundamentally the situation. But to me, I don't really care. Did anyone wear long sleeves at the Saints? Uh, yeah, we had players that wore long sleeves when they – Probably felt like Milne? they needed to. Milne would have worn a long sleever if we played and it was really cold. Yeah, no doubt. But I can back you up because I saw the Fremantle um, property steward because they had a captain's run oh, before yeah. the game yesterday. And he said, no. Paulie Salas, he we said, love him. And he said, I packed the long sleevers for every game. He said he packed the long sleevers in the uh, so, in the kit. So, so no, yeah, there were long sleeves always there. two strikes for you, so don't <laughs> let there be three. <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing. He clipped you last time. We've had this conversation before. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Although I got the text where he said he was taking out of context. And that, but, you know, one, it's the Malcolm Blight when you go down the race, right? So um, he gets one. Oh, he's good luck. When he gets another one, your bad luck. He gets three, Ooh. tighten up. So yeah. I'm probably at the three. <laughs> I'll look to tighten up. Three strikes with Ed Langdon. Uh, and then do you have, is there any doubt? Like Collingwood, Braden Maynard, I think Jack Crisp said something. They went him in that opening minute, Browning. Do you, that was a, that they were aware of what was said. It was the perfect opportunity to get him yeah, as well. So he's on centre wing. Yes. The ball went slowly to him, and I just thought it set the night up brilliantly. And it must be said that Ed Langdon didn't take a backward step all night. So there's a couple of balls that went in long inside their defensive 50 that he had to sit under, and he took a couple of marks. So he's he brave. Did, he is brave. He's so brave. He took it on. He, he said the comments. And I'm not – I listened to Alan Richardson who said he made a mistake. I'm not sure he made a oh, mistake. No, is there I, an I, element I, of what? I love this. I know football clubs don't want it, and it's very insular because you don't want it think used against you, but surely using something against Ed Langdon doesn't propel you no, to a win. No. Isn't, so there you an go, element, isn't there an element of what Ed was saying in the media was clearly what had been spoken about internally in their, ma- well, in, their, in, their in their opposition analysis. He didn't just make that up himself. Some it's somewhere else, maybe they didn't use the exact words, or but the, the gist of what they were obviously preparing for Collingwood was what he'd said. You take the, this office, they can't beat us. Yeah. It's not the words. I think it's about, it was disrespectful. Mm. They're a turnaround club, new coach, reigning premier. Yeah, they got this and we'll handle it. Mm. I, so you know Ed intimately, right? So you've well, coached I thought him. I did. You, <laughs> you've got, so if he says it, is it disrespectful or is it just him talking as if he's just having another conversation with somebody? He's the sort of person who could be aloof just to say that and not realise the it's impact aloof, of it. aloof, but perception's reality. What, what does everyone perceive it to be? Mm. How do you perceive it to be? I perceive it that that's how they think Collingwood are yeah, and that's how they're going to get them. Yeah, but to say it and with the flippancy, how do you think Collingwood perceived it? They didn't perceive it very well at they all. They were insulted. Mm. So if you insult someone, you're going to get their back up. Which puts petrol on the fire for people like Braden Maynard, right? Yeah, and you're motivated as an AFL team and that, but there's just – desire drives wolfhound. So if it just ratchets you up and steals your mind and um, it just – well, they're not the unbeatable team everyone thinks. They've lost six this year. So, and they're 21 points down against a Bulldogs team that's turned out to be okay. So I think yeah, they, they've got a challenge. They're not a dynasty yet. And you don't want to, you know, it's, it's humble in victory. You don't want to poke the bear, but, you know, you do love players when they talk about that because it, it creates excitement in the game. It creates a story. And if it was the NFL and people hate us using – American sport as an example, but if a player said that in the NFL, it, it wouldn't even make the, the highlight. Yeah, right. no, what it's, not back. it's not what you say, it's how you say it. It added to the theatre of the night, didn't it? That that's, what my wife, we, we, that's what my wife says to me. <laughs> <laughs> as you're saying, you love her as you're on your phone putting on a multi. That, <laughs> did, did, okay, did you get into a break? 
Brisbane taking on Carlton today. Massive game at the Gabba. And for both sides, Brisbane looking for top four. Carlton just need one more win to make the eight this year for the gym. This is the Triple M Sunday Rub. It's time for Jay-Z's Big Three. This is Jay-Z's uh-huh, uh-huh. Big Three. Before we get to that, Jay-Z, yep. uh, choice hotels around the ground. Sydney up against North Melbourne. Yeah, and Sydney leading by 8.128 over the Kangaroos. Uh, yet to score there under the roof at Marvel Stadium. Big day for the Swans as they look to shore up a uh, top four spot. Hey, uh, fellas, the top eight is set with two rounds remaining after Richmond's uh, win over Port Adelaide last night. Puts them in an eighth spot at 46 points. Now, below them is St Kilda on 44. The Western Bulldogs, you can... You can almost put a line through uh, on 40 and Gold Coast now out of the running as well. But this is the eight and Richmond is in it after a very strong win over uh, Port Adelaide last night in which Shea Bolton, if if he's not the most informed player in the competition at the moment, he is in scary good form for the Tigers. And when you consider they've already got Dustin Martin, et cetera, do we feel like Richmond if they can, or now that they've um, look like they've sewn up eighth spot, do we feel like they're any threat at all? Like, do we feel like they they can mount a genuine challenge with Bolton, with Lynch, with Rewalt, with Cochin? Very good so last you're convinced night. Convinced the eight is set now. I reckon you can set and forget. Well, the I think eight. Richmond make it. Carlton have still got to win a game. Obviously, the Western Bulldogs have got two winnable games coming up. St Kilda got a couple of tough ones both at home against good sides. So, look, I still think the Western Bulldogs, if they win their last two games big, can go in front of Carlton, but Carlton need to win a game. Your answer about Shea Bolton, I think he's the best player in the game right now. You've got Lockie Neal, Clayton Oliver, Brayshaw, midfielders, but there's nobody doing what Shea Bolton can do. There's nobody at ground level in the air being able to do what he does at the moment in pack games. The only... Limiting his game is the fact that he can't score. He's kicking so 39 goals, 39. If he kicked 55 goals, he could be winning the Brownlow Medal at the moment. He's so, scoring reasonably. He kicked 4 5. Yeah. But imagine taking his game to that no, next well, level. Uh, I mean, yeah. he could be the best ga- player in the game by a fair bit. He did no, start the year quietly, though, didn't he? He it did. Took a while. A couple of games. But he's come good. Yeah, to answer your question, I think Grimes is a huge loss. Uh, Martin, if they play finals, I think. Would be back. They would expect him to be back for finals. They'll be sweating on Vlosten if uh, Grimes is out. Yeah, with a and with a with rib. rib. So Bulldogs make it. I don't see them as a threat. I've seen too much of them now defensively. And I, th- I was thinking about them. Their midfield to me, Bar Bailey Smith is slow mm-hmm. We're, or not quick. So sure. there's a difference, right? So, um, but Richmond getting in and they, they've been in winning positions against quality a lot. So yeah, people would be really worried. They they just can't have too many injuries. Wouldn't want to finish fifth and play Richmond first week of the finals. I, I'm, I mean, no. I'm worried about Richmond now. They, they, they are in form. They look sharp. Shea Bolton, the best mid forward player in the competition. Tom Lynch, when he plays aggressive footy, when he launches into packs and, and takes those big marks, it adds a different dynamic to them. And he's back playing that way. So and and then Curvis, he was critical yeah. in that third quarter last week, and he's gone on. He's had 29 disposals. And if people criticise Richmond when he's made captain. You can see why. We, we love the way he plays. Well, we did the game last week, and they wouldn't have won the game if Lynch hadn't have turned the game. And uh, he is a big forward, but whenever a big forward enters the room, and he is the king, he's, <laughs> his name is the king, we have to stop what we're doing because Jay Z's halfway through his first big three. But uh, let's welcome the man, the number 18, Ruboy himself, <laughs> the best player Ruboy. in the game, Wayne <laughs> Carey. Actually, I'd, uh, I, I'd tell you what I did. Uh, I had a chat to, I was trying to have a chat to Pago, but. Uh, it got too hard in the end and we ran out of time and I was going, I wanted him because he listens to the, he'd be, least, he's listening to really? this show now. Really? G'day, Pagan. Absolutely Mr. loves the Pagan show. Mr. to you. And, sorry, what Dennis, gonna, sorry, Dennis. and what I was going to get him to do is go through each one of you and what he thinks of you because he, <laughs> he would have coached against you guys and, and I did start with you. I said, what would you say about Brad? He said, well, he had no right foot. Uh, <laughs> But you That's did. That's incorrect. Know, yeah. But anyway, he loves the show. He loves Ross, obviously. And uh, Why, obviously? No. Well, well, I worked I under Dennis. Oh, Dennis Everyone was uh, part us. of my three-year yeah, apprenticeship right. of my Trout ten said years. To say hello, the giddy giddy gal. Um, he he wouldn't have been that, talking much, Trout. Well, there was, uh, if you can pick one guy, you guys to know maybe a little bit about that team, but one guy who you reckon uh, you know was uh, rusty, angry, uh, um, and all of the above, right Rocky? from the start. Yeah, can was it Rocky? Bang. <laughs> it was a bit salty, oh, was it? But, yeah, well, because I. I oh yeah, uh, yeah. So he, he, but I actually liked your discipline, Duck. Yes, on Friday. So he didn't exactly go Friday. Right. That was oh, they would like, have been disappointed. The yeah, boys that exactly Duck didn't right. go. So I thought uh, no, I kept myself uh, good for for yesterday. Rocky didn't. 
Um, <laughs> so, th- so that we we spread the ashes of one of our uh, legends, uh, you know, property steward, boot guy, Orb Devlin, down there on the because we couldn't do it during COVID and. Rocky got off to a flyer, so while you're going through something like that, and he's chiming in with his little bird on the biggy tin comments, and uh, fair to say, it didn't go over too well with a couple of the uh, key people at the club. But he, he doesn't. So he won't be coaching the kangaroos. He won't be coaching the kangaroos. But you know what? He doesn't care. <laughs> How was the day yesterday? How good would it have been? The casual um, catch up yeah, yesterday yeah, first. Big, yeah, no, it was a good day. Good day. We all, uh, um, yeah, it sort of and kicked on a little bit, not too, uh, not too big. Ended up back at the Emerald up the road. You up look the road fresh, there. Doug. Um, I, I'm I'm pretty back, good. I back You're up back pretty up. well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, and yeah, Mick Martin go, was he there? Uh, Mick, yeah, I see him yeah, in Williams yeah. down all the time, Mick. Been bitten by a couple of bees, Mick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just swollen a little. Um, but he's, uh, no, he was in very good form. I, they stole my wallet. Like how immature. So I, <laughs> so, so I got my wallet and just halfway through the day and you, you, you just want to relax. You want to enjoy the day. And I'm, I just sit my wallet there. So someone's obviously noticed that it's my wallet and they've hidden it. So then I'm anxious for a couple of hours because I haven't, Before got, my wallet. Triton, totally I haven't got my wallet. And uh, then I, I go to the toilet and I come back and then all of a sudden they go, oh, is that your wallet under the table there, Doug? So what, I think it was Mick. He was playing funny buggers. He, Horse? So, uh, ho- no, horse, horse Mr. 96. He, oh, right, uh, he yeah. played in 99. Because one so. thing Anthony did say in your great mate Craig Schultz, I was talking about everyone's gone on in different positions in their life and that, but when you come back together, whether you're the coach, like horse coaching swans, or everyone just goes back to the identity <laughs> that they that you had within at that, that time. Team. Correct. It's Correct. Which is, uh, it, and it is, it is because. When we when we had the ninety nine one, when you got Horse and, and Simo, who who have presence now as as senior coaches, so they come back into that environment and they're, and they're not Horse the coach or Simo <laughs> the, or the Premiership they're coach. Getting they're, beer, they're, they're just Horse and Simo. You know, horses Horse goes back to him and I travelling overseas together. That 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 uh, so a lot of stories, uh, a lot of good fun, and uh, funnily enough, it'll probably go this afternoon for a little bit as well. So the boys are at the game. Uh, that's started. I Choice assume. Hotels yeah. around the grounds. Lead a break, book, direct and save at choicehotels.com. Sydney up by eight points over North Melbourne, 20 to 12. So they're, they're having a lunch now and then uh, we're off at uh, three. So and it's a great pitch. reminder for the current North list. I, I really like it because it helps with the belief system. This club, not that long ago, was winning flags and we can do it. Dominant. Right, on back the big to you, Jay-Z. So we're night. talking about Richmond. Well, can I just ask, on the, with all big weekend for the North Melbourne Football Club, all the greats together... Was there any chatter about Alistair Clarkson? Oh, yeah. His name came up uh, a little bit. I, I, what was the hot tip? Uh, well, I think everyone knows that they're, they're, they're deep. They're deep into the conversations with Clarko, and um, I think that's fantastic. But I haven't I haven't got any other information. You other got a gut that. feel? I wasn't really worrying about who's coaching him. Uh, <laughs> I was just uh, celebrating how good I was back in that uh, <laughs> 96. As I said, you've got to go back to where you were at that time, Brad. Have they haven't <laughs> finished it yet. They're have, still going to finish it. There the drink the choices change these days. I mean, there's so many more op- options to go out there and have a nice you know, a cocktail or a wine. I imagine back in the day, in the mid-90s, it would have been pretty much the green can. A, a, c- correct, the VB can. But you know what? And this is, this is also talk about maturity. I reckon there were two or three of us that were on the great northern mid-strengths all day. So by the end of the day last – time I went to bed, um, I was okay. But there were a lot, of, they were a lot messy at about four o'clock because they were on the full <laughs> yeah. strength. Strength, mid strength. They, the boys couldn't believe it actually. They said, I never thought I'd see the day. And did, you reminisce, yeah. did you reminisce about your trips to Sydney over the week when you played we, on a Friday night and then you went and spent Saturday, Sunday in st- Sydney? Did you reminisce about stories, those, those little I, trips? I reckon I've got to go and have my head tested because stories came up about things that I've done and I can't remember any of them. <laughs> and some of them, were, <laughs> some of them were unbelievable. So man. And going, <laughs> they used to hit a chukamore, the, the water no, skiing but, trip. But, and oh, they're telling me these stories, and I'm going, "You Was sure? I there? Was I there? Yeah, don't you just put them out of your mind every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, I'm going to get another call. I need another payout for concussion. <laughs> just give us a flavour of some of those stories, Doug. What were they talking about? You're on field exploits. You need the AFLP up again. Your shoulder. No, they can't. You can't. Actually, talking about the PA, Tim. Harrington, who I didn't realise was Ford's coach um, <laughs> for three years at North. Well, he was there. He looked he looked like uh, Betty off Golden Girls. He's got <laughs> he's got the little tight uh, the curls. tight uh, grey hair like curls. 
from behind, he looked like just any any uh, person's old nana sitting from behind. <laughs> I just had tears right out my face all day. And then I put the you f- made him feel good about himself yeah. then, did you? Oh, and that's the other thing about those days. You just, you know, it, it is all about, you know, hanging uh, – and having and having fun, you've, you've you've got to have a very thick skin. Now we've had a segment all year, and Jay Z's been promising that we'd have a sponsor oh, all year, God. and I'm glad to announce. And I'm just looking over at Jay Z now, and he's got a beautiful hoodie on, which says "Everything Caravan and Camping." Now you can get everything you need for your next caravanning, camping, and four wheel drive trip from the most popular brands at EverythingCaravanCamping.com.au. We welcome them to the Sunday Rub because they are the official sponsor of Hitch Your Caravan. Hey. Yes, that's uh, right. On Triple M Sunday Rub. Do it for a caravan. We're hitching the caravan for everything caravan and camping. Get everything you need for your next caravanning, camping and four-wheel drive trip from all of the most popular brands at everythingcaravancamping.com.au. I think you're all over this, Duck, because I know that you're a camper. I know you like to take the kids camping away in a camper well, van. Hey, I'll, well, I'll, I'll try once, it. Once upon, a, once upon a time, I mean, I, I love sleeping under the stars. <laughs> As long as there's five, and you're a good listener. <laughs> as long as there's five, no, we got it. Dave. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we got it. No, I, no, you know what? I, because I love the big fours. I love yes. going to the big fours now because the kids can just run off and play, and you know, you know. oh, they're great. They, I, I actually so I went into camp. one of the stores camping. yesterday, great. even though this is online. If yes. I had had time, <laughs> I would have went online. But uh, you know, my daughter was going away for the Odyssey camp, and they actually. Yes. Uh, what is it? Uh, Cross country skiing. So I had to get the thermals and all that. So, but I saw all the equipment. I thought, oh, this is a brave new world. I've got to get into the camp. But I'd like to go first today, Jay Z, because yeah, I've only I put some thought. I've only got, for our I've only too, got one. <laughs> you, you, you introduced and all that, but I only got one, right? Go. So if I miss it, yep. I'm stuck. So have you finished? Or? No, you keep oh, you okay. go. I, I'm going with O'Driscoll. O'Driscoll from Fremantle. Nathan? Nathan. Yeah, number 30. Is he, good? he had 20. Mm. He kicked. That explosion. We talk about Warner and he's got pace and kick. This kid, that goal is a special goal in that moment. And to me, you get it's like a window in. It just I just think they've got a player there. That so I'm hooking my wagon to him. I, I just I love his <laughs> caravan. Hitch your caravan. Hitch, hit, well, caravan get it right now. camping and uh, now we've got a sponsor, everything. And uh, like, and camp. Do, do you like him? Yeah, he's a beauty. He's beauty. A, he's he's I think he's going to be a star. You yeah. probably picked him as well, did you, Joey? Nathan O'Driscoll? Or... No. You had a look at his tape, though, didn't Can you? Can I go like next? No, he loves the I accumulators. They don't penetrate. This kid penetrated. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of highly talented youngsters, that's yes. just off Broadway at the moment that I want to hitch my caravan to. He's my boy, long term. Mm. Mm. Kid played at the Gold Coast Suns yesterday named Elijah Hollands. He yes. was a top 10 draft pick a couple of years ago. Had an ACL injury brownie. He had 23 touches and two goals yesterday. Big size mid forward, the perfect prototype of the midfielder uh, into the future. He's going to be an absolute star, this kid. He's just had the three or four games now under his belt. Watch out for him to be a huge explosion. Elijah Hollins. I reckon his brother's still at school. He's going to be better. Ollie Hollins. His dad played at Richmond a handful, kicked a uh, match winner over at Subiaco. Ben Ben Hollins. I reckon he's a Wagga boy up from that way. Wadonga. uh, He's Wadonga. Wadonga. Really nice guy. Jeff Gershon coaching. So, although that that was small, it's interesting that the boys are big. Yep. Well, talking about big, I'm going to hitch my caravan to young Sam Darcy. What a player this kid's going to be! So five intercept uh, uh, grabs. Um, you can just see that he he and he's he's going to obviously play forward as well. He can play both ends of the ground. I love the fact they haven't rushed uh, rushed him into it. He'll play the next couple of games and maybe finals. Um, Boy, what a player he's going to be! I thought and, he was their best defender yesterday. And he and he keep if he keeps that athleticism because he's. Jeez, he's still growing. And he showed some two oh nine. You would have loved huge. it. So, he was late uh, on the contest. We love uh, we love our man Luke, but uh, Sam aggressive. Put Sam, a knee in. Yes. Like he didn't get there. Yeah, put the knee, knee in. Didn't I didn't thought he? It was all as much as a fifty. Yeah. I thought this kid's got a will to win. Yeah, he's a oh, let's be, let's. He's probably an obvious one to hitch to because you can just see that he's going to be very good for Great a very pick. long time. Number two pick. We all love him in here, but just let, can we have a listen to Luke Beveridge, the Western Bulldogs senior coach, last night? Just did, did Luke Beveridge hitch? His caravan to Sam Darcy or not? I'm not sure. Let's have a listen. Yeah, I thought Sam went pretty well. He intercepted a few times and, you know, it'll take him a fair while to acclimatise to, you know, the level. And uh, But ultimately, you know, he got in the way a little bit. Um, yeah, our, our back end hasn't been that cohesive all year. We've changed 
um, a lot. You know, it's been quite dramatic change. It's the evolution of our team. You know, I thought Sam did okay uh, in his first game, and uh, he'll learn a lot from the experience. Wasn't a strong hit. Yeah, fair to say, <laughs> fair to say, it's going to take a fair yeah, bit of the moment just... to make Luke happy. Yeah. Organising oh, yeah. the caravan, wasn't he? He yeah. actually didn't hitch it. He just thought, no. nah, I'm going to leave it off for a while. Yeah, it's like it's there. I, okay, I'm going to hitch my caravan. Flat and there's two things that um, that I want to. I, I I think that Richmond can play in the grand final. I think that yeah. they can get a good draw and play in the grand final. The other thing I'm going to hitch my caravan Without to. Without Grimes and Dusty, uh, Grimes will be back. Don't you worry about that. No, I, I no, think, he's had a tendon. Yeah, he's had hamstring surgery. Who? He's had surgery. <laughs> he might be back for five, you never know. <laughs> but Although they did say finals, Their forward mate. line yeah. is as dangerous as what you could have. So you've got Tom Lynch, who's playing probably career best footy at the moment. Shea Bolton, who's the best player in the game right now. Noah Cumberland, who can kick. So you've got a guy there, Jack Rewald, who's kicked 700 goals, getting the fourth best defender at the moment. So I think on the back of, if they can stand up at the back end, and obviously Vluston plays and they'll get Grimes back for the finals. Hopefully that's what they said. That's where I was coming from. That maybe they can get to the grand final. But I'm also going to hitch my caravan this week to you and Alistair Clarkson, because I think Me? that long oh. sleeve jumpers should be banned in the AFL. Brownie. I You're not new when, age. I think, and I wore them once when I played at the Western Bulldogs, and I look back, and it wasn't a great look. So I look at the players <laughs> I now. Agree with North, that. I'm watching North Melbourne today. We did them a favour, a fashion when got statement. The stripes. It is a horrendous looking jumper. So I'm looking at Jaden Stevenson today, and I'm I'm not encouraged. I, I look at the jumper, times. and I saw Mitch Lewis wearing a Hawthorne one last week. I'm not encouraged when I see it. I mean, and it'd be fair to say with AFL players, right, as a senior coach, you actually got to co- encourage them to have a top on. Yeah. They love getting their rigs <laughs> out, right? It doesn't look as tough. That's that's all I'm saying. It doesn't look as tough. No, so no. a long sleeve You're jumper saying it looks soft. doesn't look so I'm short, soft. I don't want to say loose. the word soft. I'm saying it doesn't look as tough as a short so sleeve jumper. So sleeveless and stamps we want. I reckon there, yeah. was, I reckon there was a couple of uh, years ago and there was a Carlton game where I counted at least six or seven Carlton players that had long sleeves. Let me guess, they the lost, and they lost the game. Correct. Oh, yeah. there, you, there you go. Yeah. Well, we can think about this in the break. Who was the toughest long sleeve jumper wearer? Michael in- Tuck. Stephen Silvani was pretty tough. James Hurd wore a lot of long sleeve. He yeah. was pretty tough. Very good answer. Another question? No, I like that. Um, <laughs> all right, I wanna, back. Hey, it's easy to hitch a caravan to someone who's playing really well and is in form and is a tough top, top draft pick. You know, that, that's the, oh. they're the easy hitches. Okay. So I'm going to hitch my caravan to a bloke who was dropped from the team this week. Right, and I, and I'm surprised by it. So mm. I think he's got he's a star. I think he's a young star, and I think he's going to be a highly sought after player next year. And I think he's going to be one of the gun key forwards of the competition. Talk about your Oscar Allens and your De Konings and You've you know your, your Kings, etc. Oscar, Oscar, Oscar Allen hasn't played all year. Oscar Allen, yeah, he's a star, though, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, he can be, could be. Right, yeah. Mitch Georgiades at Port Adelaide, mm. a centre half forward. He's a mobile marking target. He's from WA. He's what? out of contract next year. Why did he get dropped? He? Well, he hasn't been. He, he, he wasn't in. Hasn't but, had hey, kick, hasn't had a kick all year. Hey, Duck. Hey, duck. Hey, he kicked a few in the SNFL, didn't he? Yeah, uh, yesterday. yesterday. They said he responded well. Yeah, Have yeah, you done he, your research? Yeah, or? he played well on that. But I'm thinking, I'm more broad brush here. <laughs> oh, right. Right. Where's he going? Yeah. You do look, he has got, you, you can see get, that he's, got, he's, he's got some tricks, he's got some talent, but he's he just hasn't put it together. This is the this first year. one you've come up with. If with you're the Pies, sponsor. would you go for the him instead of McStay? He's kicked 19 goals in 17 games this year as a key forward. If I was and the Pies, I'd be going for Rory Lobb over McStay. So would I. Mm. As a main banana. I don't see why course. they need um, Daniel McStay. I mean, Brady Mychek already does that job. Give me something different. Give me some sort of flexibility. He well, can play in the well, ruck as well. They, they say he's going to the Bulldogs, which you would probably have line aside on. I don't What's he going to bring either. out there? Is it... I think they're stacked for forward talent, the Bulldogs. So I don't understand why they get, unless he's a backup ruckman, but we've been told he doesn't want to play ruck. Are we thinking that Aaron Norton's going back? Does Aaron Norton oh, fix don't their... Send a, you don't send a, a forward back. Why would you? Well, because Luke Beveridge does anything. Forwards are, are, Alex Pierce forwards are harder to find than backmen. Alex Backman. Pierce owned Norton last night. Yeah, he had little impact. Mm. Yeah, but he, maybe that's the he woman. Three. Maybe, maybe that's the one. I kicked three. I kicked three. too strong. The delivery wasn't Luke great. Beveridge was very complimentary I love Alex of Rory Pierce. Lobb in his press conference, wasn't he? Well, let's have a listen. Oh, was he? Yeah. Well, let's More take complimentary off. than Sam Darcy. Let's take a listen. Yeah, well, he was exceptional today, uh, Rory, you know, and they got the ball to him. You know, he, he worked hard, obviously, and, um, yeah, in some of those areas, um, they kick goals from, you know, they're, they're difficult spots, so he, he really helped. Uh, Freeman will maintain that momentum and he'll always be a handful you know with with what he does and what he's capable of 
and um, you know what he was at GWS, and uh, and he's probably having one of his best years this year, obviously. Well, the, that's a that's smart. called a that's, that's called a thicken. sales pitch. <laughs> yeah. That's called a sales pitch. He? he was good though. Where yeah. he kicked them from was like he's a polarizing player though. Are you a Rory Lobman? I coach him. We recruited him to the Dockers. What do you think? Do you get value? He uh, look, I he played some really good footy when I was there. He kicked it, but he went into the ruck a few times, and I got to, I said, mate, he I, he could be the best ruckman in the comp. He was getting twenty and kicking goals, and he was kicking as many goals in the ruck as he was forward. So, um, but yeah, you're right. I, he doesn't really want to play in the ruck. Good edition of the first one. It is everything caravan and camping dot com dot au. Get there for all your needs. And can I say it? Everything caravan and camping. Uh, everything caravan camping dot com dot au. Enter their competition for your chance for a camper trailer and prizes worth more than forty four thousand dollars. Browning for the gym. This is the Triple M Sunday Rub.